Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to be doing a language analysis. So in the last video, I read through and discussed some of the language in this little excerpt here. I remembered the case well, etc, 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 from page 73 on the PDF. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to look into one particular excerpt from that excerpt and a little bit more detail. And what we're going to do is we're going to break this sentence up into chunks and we're going to identify how those chunks utilize language to convey a certain idea. So the reason that we're doing this is to let you go into real detail to find out how Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wrote what he wrote and what he tries to achieve with that use of language. So let's start off. The first thing we need to do is we're going to break up our passage into sections. So let me grab a little pen here. What we're going to do is we're going to break this up into little chunks. So every little chunk of meaning, I'm going to put a slash between them to make it really easy to follow. And this might be worth you doing as well, just to follow along, because you're going to be doing this yourself a little bit later. Um, but I've already prepared a template for you just so that you can cheat a little bit. So somewhere there, oh, somewhere there. Well, that's a place we're referring to somewhere there. So, okay, put a slash there. On that desolate plain, oh, okay, on that desolate describes uh, a thing. It's that thing over there, and that thing is desolate. Um, plain, okay, well, that's a place. So, we need to be able to identify what that is. Was lurking this fiendish man. Okay, so there's a couple of things here. Was lurking. Uh, lurking is a verb. It's a thing you do. Was lurking then is a chunk of meaning that tells us somebody is doing something. Uh, this fiendish man. Okay, so this, this individual in particular. Remember, we're referring back to our uh, criminal at that stage. Fiendish describes the criminal and man further describes that criminal. So we're going to put a slash there. So this fiendish man is one unit of meaning. Hiding in a burrow. Okay, so hiding again is verb, it's a doing word, and the burrow is the place where the individual is hiding. So he is hiding inside a burrow. Done. Like a wild beast. Like a wild beast describes the way that he's hiding in a burrow. So we're going to put a slash in there as well. Okay. Now it's worth noting there that we then have a simile here, hiding in a beast like a wild, sorry, hiding in a burrow like a wild beast, not hiding in a in a beast like Luke Skywalker. Although I'm told you thought they were smelly on the outside. Uh, his heart. Okay. So this is a, a thing we're referring to, the criminal's heart, the thing full of malignancy. Well, that's describing the heart. The heart is full of malignancy against the whole race. Oh, so that this is then describing whom the malignancy is aimed at. So it's against, the malignancy is against the whole race, okay, which in this situation is humanity, okay, we're leaving it at that, which had cast him out. Uh, so that's explaining why he dislikes that whole race, the whole of humanity. All right, so that's really interesting. So the interesting running that we've got here, somewhere there on that desolate plane was lurking this fiendish man, hiding in a burrow like a wild beast, his heart full of malignancy against the whole world, blah, 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 which had cast him out. So this particular passage is very much about the criminal, this man, his, him. Okay, so that's something that we need to remember. Something else that's quite interesting here, and I'll go with my blue pen here, uh, is we're talking about somewhere there on that plane. Uh, so we're here referring to the location. So there is a spatial relationship between the there and the narrator. Okay, we're making it really, really clear here that 
the narrator is looking at that desolate plain. Okay, it is the narrator's views that we're getting here. All right, so that's step one of what we need to know. And in the next video, we'll look at actually moving on and filling in a little bit more detail with this. Good job. Thank you. I give myself a pat on the back. You should too.